All right, welcome to Rob's Rogues and the Batman Universe and the Bat Fans podcast, which I'm also now a part of. And we are finally here for the Batman classic TV series, or some people refer to this as Batman 66, the Batman and Robin adult collector two-pack with diorama base or wall or window set or whatever you want to have, but just pure awesomeness. Um, was a big fan of the 66 TV series as a kid, and when I mean as a kid, I was born in 74, so this was a few years after the original air date, but sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, I started seeing reruns of this show, and up until this point, I didn't really know of any other live-action Batman TV shows. Uh, I think maybe I had seen some of the old black and white serials maybe once, or maybe I saw it after the original, you know, six or the, the original after I saw the '66 TV series. So uh, before that, Batman and Robin for me were just on these Saturday morning cartoons and the New Adventures of Batman, and then eventually we got to finally see the uh, Super Friends uh, hour, and then turn into kind of the superpowers. So, in the late 70s, early 80s, that was my real basic introduction to Batman and Robin. And then, eventually, I think I ended up staying over uh, for the summer at my aunt's house. All us cousins would get together, and I remember they turned on the TV at night, and I saw, for the first time, the Batman classic TV series, the 1966, and I was just blown away. It was a comic book come to life. And I didn't know anything about things being campy. I just remember being so enthralled. And that was, I think, the actual moment, my obsession for uh, Batman and Robin. And then eventually my obsession with Robin really kind of grew out of that live action uh, TV series. And uh, then it was just full steam ahead for me. So I know I'm doing a little bit of talking. I think I'll probably do an intro to this video, which I haven't shot yet, which I may say some of the same things. But enough of that. Uh, this was something as soon as I saw that it was going to be released, I uh, instantly pre-ordered it and I pre-ordered it and then told my wife, hey, I pre-ordered this. And she kind of gave me a look. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> She's like, let me guess, this is the last thing you're going to buy. Of course it's the last thing I'm going to buy. This round. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this unfortunately, at least right now, is the only way to get uh, Mr. Burt Ward here, Robin, a.k.a. Dick Grayson, is in this two-pack, which is really kind of a bummer. But, this is one of these two-packs that from time to time Mattel really surprises the crap out of me and I say why can't they do stuff like this in two packs all the time sometimes in a two pack you'll ju get just two figures that's it maybe one accessory if you're lucky for one of the two figures but Mattel has done a knockout job now even just I haven't got this out you may be able to see a little something around Robin's cape I don't know whether to be upset yet. I'm kind of upset about one thing in here. We'll see if uh, it warrants to be fully upset or not, or disappointed. But aside from what I can tell inside the package, uh, this is just going to be great. And this is really uh, makes me happy with Mattel and then disappointed on another end. But enough of that. Um, you just get this marvelous looking package uh, that is very rem reminiscent of the 60s, you know, psychedelic colors and you know, the classic Batman TV series logo. And then you have kind of the pow, wham, you know, kind of explosions here. It says Batman and Robin Adult Collector. Um, they need to really stop thinking that they're marketing these towards kids because it's us big kids that are buying them, which is why nine times out of ten everything says adult collector. And then there's your hazard uh, warning there if I get that in frame. It says uh, use a base on a shelf or a wall. This is so cool with this feature. Um, so we'll get to some other side of the package here. Here is a classic look. It's almost a cell, right? You can imagine Batman you know, running. He looks over. Hey, where's Robin? Here comes Robin running. 
<laughs> Can't you hear? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be geeking out majorly with this, so uh, be warned. If you don't like uh, geeks or anything like that, turn off your camera because I'm going to geek out probably through this whole entire thing. Um, there's the back of the package here. Really cool. Love the blue. And you can kind of see the Zock. <laughs> and uh, where was another one? There's the PAL. The classic PAL and the uh, classic BAT logo, which I think is always really kind of cool. I'm glad they didn't use that on the costume with Batman, but a um, little handshake there, which I think is so, so very cool. Um, it says Batman and Robin. Let's see. Uh, let me get my... Uh, radio voice here don't be alarmed good citizen they're here on official business batman and robin limber up and climb while on the hunt for gotham city's fiendish villains carefully ascending the building as one must never sacrifice safety for speed the dynamic duo encounters most fascinating people you never know who might pop out of the window and say hello <laughs> uh, that's for you Chapman Films so uh, same bat time same bat channel featuring and then here are the other figures you can get in uh, this first wave and it's a quite impressive first wave we have Batman the Joker the Riddler the Penguin the very sexy Catwoman and then surfs up Batman which I think is really funny uh, Julie Newmar might have been my first TV crush seeing her in that Catwoman outfit I went oh so that's what a woman looks like so uh, very very cool um, I almost don't want to get this out here's the other cool thing the bat signal at the top here you can kind of see down inside you see Robin right there so very very excited to get this out of package I cannot wait. Uh, this is a package I'm going to try and uh, keep uh, in uh, very good condition as much as I can in case I ever want to repackage this. Um, and men on card people maybe going, oh, don't take it out. These two are dying to come out of the package. So we are going to take a look at these two and oh. Can Batman escape? One hint the worst is yet to come. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. You're ready to move up. almost dropped that that was really scary but I caught it so we've got the first part of the dynamic duo out of package and I'm a little I want to say a little bummed I'm a disappointed as as great as everything else is gonna be uh, so far they're gonna not gonna get a 99 right now unless I get through more of the figures um, they have first of all these stupid stupid little T pins going through this cape why Mattel, are you doing that? Uh, and Robin, unfortunately, has two in his cape. He's got one here, and then they put one in Batman's cape. This is almost practically in the middle, and it goes down through into Robin's cape. Now, as so far as good as it is was packaged, if I was going to try and steal this out of a store, it'd be a complete pain in the butt getting all this tape, so I don't know if they think that's going to deter people from trying to steal it, or if they think, oh, it's going to make the capes look good in the package. You don't, Mattel, you don't need to do that. And there is a little tag in here on the back of Batman's cape, and Robin's cape, we'll get a better look at that in a second. So two small little gripes I know it's like already I'm kind of coming down on these two, but I think that's going to be all that it is. Um, I did want to show you this nice little building set up here, kind of like some uh, nice little colors. This would work just good as a display on its own, but I think uh, this is molded in in here, this uh, vacuum sealed plastic. You can kind of see the ridge right here where it's sealed in. So once I pull this to get the building piece off, I'm probably gonna tear all this purple part of the building. So I, it's 
glued in here very, very well. So I'm going to pause the camera again real quick and I'm going to get these guys fully out of package. I'm so excited to get these guys out. Be right back. One second. And real quick, let me show you this again. Here is one of the T little uh, pieces that I just actually pushed out so it fell. But um, you can kind of see the hole a little bit. If I can get it in the right light. Holy hole in the door! See the hole right there? Kind of a drag behind the figure, not so much. Um, you know, paid enough for these. I don't want holes in the cape. Um, so that's a little downer right there. But uh, we'll get into the figures here in just a second. Hold on. All right, here they are, finally out of package. And I gotta say, I do like them, and you can probably see the tags sticking out. Uh, we'll go right to the eyesore first. Uh, we're just gonna pull Robin here as he's the closest. And uh, this is just like something you would find on your pillow, which really annoys the crap out of me. It says, uh, here's the registration, patent number, all that stuff. All new materials consisting of plastic coated wires stiffeners. Uh, surface washable only. Now, you mean to tell me you could not have put just a piece of paper inside here, or tucked it in around one of the capes, rather than sew it to the cape itself? Big, big bummer. And of course, there are Robin's holes right there. Holy hole in a donut! It inside the cape. So that is a bummer right away. We got this nice looking cape as Batman falls over. I'm having a hard time getting Batman to stand. His one ankle joint was very, very, very stiff. Uh, so stiff to the point where I thought I was going to break it. But so what this guy is going to do, he is going to, I would like to think I could pull this out of the stitch. Um, Man, I don't know. So I think I'm probably going to have to do is cut this out. So for the sake of this review, I want to get this stupid thing out of the way. And of course, I got scissors here. and I'm going to try to be very, very careful. I'm just going to rough cut this right now. And I'll get a lot finer once I shut the camera off. But at least for the review sake, this stupid thing can go away. So I can kind of tuck that around. Uh, we'll get into the wire stiffeners and all that stuff for the cape. Uh, but Batman's is the same way. Same spot. I would kind of hope that I could have ripped it out of there. if Maybe it was perforated somewhere. But again, I'm just going to rough cut this. I'm so afraid I'm going to actually cut the cape. Uh, am I going to call the Mattel number? Yeah, probably. The back of the box. And say, hey, I like the figures, but why the heck did you do such and such? All right. So, straighten everybody out. Hopefully get them to stand. Now, then we got these stupid things out of the way. I like them. I like them a lot. Um, we'll go through the two figures individually and take a look at the accessories that came uh, with these two figures and... Of course, me being such a Robin fan, let's uh, save Robin for last, and we'll take a look at Adam West, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne, and more importantly, Batman Good Citizen, first. All right, this is Batman. <laughs> um, I, I like this. I like it a lot. Uh, the face sculpt, I think, is done very, very well. And the thing that I like the most about this that I was a little concerned about was Mattel going to be able to pull off the eyes inside of the mask? And I think they do a very, very good job. And do a good job to the point that I always noticed in the TV series that Batman's nose was always sticking down. His real nose was sticking down just a little bit lower than the uh, cowl was on the uh, TV series. And I like the little tiny points. I always thought as a kid... You know, why doesn't Batman's ears, why aren't they longer, just a tad bit longer? Um, it's kind of hard to tell that he's a bat, but uh, given that it was the 60s, you know, after a while, I just kind of got mesmerized. Um, I always thought the little tiny bat symbol on Adam West's 
West's chest should have been just a little bit larger, but it's it's accurate to how it was in the show. I think that's very very cool. And the uh, uh, two things are making me laugh right now as, as I'm looking at it. I'm getting it really up close on camera. Uh, the belt is exactly as it should be. I think it's very cool to see the big compartments. And then you can kind of see the iridescent bat on there and the big uh, gold uh, buckle. And I always thought it was so funny that he's got almost high water underwear. Which, if you look at the TV series, I thought, you know, Batman, pull your belt down. Your belt should be hitting you here, not up here. You look like an old man for crying out loud. But they made the figure just as it was in the TV series, which makes me like this even more. So much more. And all the way down to the boots. And uh, he's skinny. A skinny figure, as he was in the TV series. You can kind of see, you know, it almost looks like he has... A hint of a little bit of a gut, just a little, in the way that uh, they have him. And uh, I like how they have sculpted the cowl, so it looks like it's one piece that goes, you know, all the way over and it gets tied around. So, very cool. And the cape, I like a lot. You know, it's one of the first times we've had cloth capes, um, except most recently in the Batman... Uh, evergreen line or the line that's kind of geared towards kids they're giving uh, Batman and Robin cloth capes now this Batman um, and then Robin too but so far there's not another Robin the other Batman the standard Batman in this line as he kind of bends here at the knee uh, does not have the stiffeners it's just a straight cape so the stiffeners are for to be able to do uh, to get some articulation out of the cape you know, as it were, which uh, the stiffener doesn't work exactly like I thought it was going to. You kind of get it a little bit here. Um, I thought it would really kind of stiffen it. It feels more like it's a, a flimsy coat hanger. So see if I can get a little bit of, ah, uh, you can get a little bit out of it. Um, I bet if I bend it up here just a little bit higher, um, I'm not sure how frail and brittle this is. If it's uh, like a pipe cleaner type thing in here, but you can see it's, I'm getting it to stiffen up there a little bit so I can get some, you know, probably nice dynamic poses. Get it dynamic. You see what I did right there? So I think this is very cool. Um, the cape doesn't sit very well. Um, you know, I bet the head, if I pulled on it good enough, the head would come off and the cape is kind of tucked in down around the head. So um, that is where the cape is attached, is probably underneath the head through the peg. So because of the stiffener here, it does cause Batman to have these higher points on the back of his cape. But in the 60s TV series, uh, Batman's cape was never wrapped around him. It was always kind of folded behind him. So it really kind of works for the figure and how it was. And if you remember in the C TV series, it was always kind of folded back over. So um, I think they did a really good job, even as it stands like that. It looks very, very well. Um, as far as the artic... There, can't talk. I'm so excited. As far as the articulation goes, this would be standard DCUC articulation. Um, we have you know, the ball-jointed head, which does move. Uh, feels like it would turn 360. Um, the, I don't think the cape's really going to hinder it too much. I can get a good range of motion. But I'm kind of wondering at what point, if I get the head to spin around, will I get it... Uh, the cape kind of twisted in and around the neck so I'm kind of a little bit cautious about that but he does get a good range of motion he can look down uh, standard tilt back uh, and it's got a good range of motion he can tilt side to side and so kind of get a little whimsical hmm Robin we'll have to kind of think about that so uh, the arms are on a nice uh, ball joint here hinge he does turn at the bicep Bends at the elbow, kind of reminds me of the female figures and kind of the joints that we're kind of dealing with. They feel a little bit stronger than the female DCUC fi figures, but not as stiff as the male figures. So, no turn at the glove, but he does turn at the hand, which is very, very cool. Um, for his high water belt here, 
He does turn at the waist. As you can tell, there is an ab crunch. And he gets a good range of motion, bending forward there. I keep him in frame here. And he can bend back like, oh, Robin, should not have had that last bat burger. Oh. So <laughs> there you go. And uh, he's got the standard T-joint for the uh, leg to pivot out. And it can go forward and back and he gets can go back pretty far now with these figures they have to be able to set in the batmobile because there is a 66 batmobile that they made for this so batman and robin can sit in the batmobile which is uh going to be really nice um not exactly sure how the batmobile is made so we'll kind of find out and he has an upper thigh turn twist bends at the knee and the feet are really kind of stiff. This is one of those I'm afraid I would break it if I put too much pressure on it. Uh, this one, as you can see, it, it does bend really good. Uh, the foot, when I got it out, because of how they had him sculpted in the uh, diorama, his foot was bent up like that, and it took me a lot to uh, get this to move. So maybe a little hot water will soften up the joints a little bit, but it appears to be really stiff now, but that foot was pretty much straight to begin with. And then, I uh, didn't really show it, the stamping on the back, if we can see it. It's got the trademark, DC Comics, part number, uh, made in China, as all good things are. And just some part numbers, I wondered if the year was on there. Doesn't appear to be. So, a uh, little bit of sculpting on the back of the belt. And I like the gauntlets here, are very cool. And uh, I don't know if the camera could pick it up, but there appears to be a little bit of uh, metal, uh, sparkle, glitter, um, as it was in the original costume. So you can kind of see that throughout. A little bit of glistening. That's not my camera. That's the actual paint that Mattel used. And they did a really good job. Um, the first prototype images that we saw, the cape looked really chintzy. Um, I'm not saying this is the greatest cape in the world. Yes, the wire uh, mesh is in here, or the uh, pipe cleaner uh, pieces in here. So um, take it for what you will, but for what uh, you can do to pose these two figures, I think it's going to work very well. And if I just wanted to have them kind of stiff and uh, sterile or um, vanilla type pose, I think that works uh, pretty good and from the TV series Batman always seemed to keep his cape uh, behind him you didn't really see it billowing out very much so I think it works very very well I definitely definitely like this figure a lot so let's move on to Robin holy camera time <laughs> I'm gonna fit as many holies as I can into this video um, first one Holy holes in my cape, Batman! Holy hole in a donut! <laughs> There's two. So uh, here is the Burt Ward, a.k.a. Dick Grayson and Boy Wonder. Again, I love the face sculpt. Dig the eyes now. It appears I have some schmutz. I'm going to sound Yiddish right there. Some schmutz on my... On my fingers right there, like there was a little schmutz. So I don't know if that's supposed to be a birth, birth ward, Bert ward birthmark. Um, I think it's just some dirt, some grime, if you will. They've been fighting crime, and he's got some grime on him. You can see it on the nose. You can see it in the cheek. You can see it in the cheek there. So um, I don't know if that's just kind of bad QC on their part. If somebody had. Some extra paint from somewhere. I really like the hair. Really, really like the hair. And at first, I thought this was paint smudge. Let's see if we can zoom in. See, they actually put his hair whisking. If I can hold still, Rob, hold still. Can you hold still? Kind of, sort of. So I thought that was a nice little touch. I thought, man, they messed up on the hair. No, it's actually painted to look like that. So really close to the face. The detail in the eyes is really good. Again, if I can stop from shaking. Uh, being this close, it's a super uh, up, you, super close. You kind of see they give him 
some uh, pink lips here and you can make out the flaws a little bit in my figure so a little disappointed that close but we're not going to be that close to the figure or even that close come on Rob so for normal viewing it's not <laughs> that bad because we're not going to be you know this close to the figure hey wow let's look at that can you see anything so uh, again he has the uh, pipe cleaners so you can get some dynamic poses out of the cape you know it doesn't quite work like I thought it was going to because there's nothing in the middle of the cape if you get him in frame to keep the cape up because the cape is still really the cape's not so much heavy as the pipe cleaners are heavy so even if they're at an angle like this if I did have them on the wall um, I would be able to bend them a little bit but if I was keeping them flat um, get a little bit out of it like that so it does work but not as dramatic as I thought I was going to be able to get it so um, I don't know exactly what I thought would be inside of the cape but uh, for what it is I'm not going to knock it it's it's really cool um, I like that they went to the little extra mile and doing something like that they could have given us just a a normal cape uh, cloth and been fine or the plastic rigid cape so uh, let's take a look at Robin's articulation his head is on a very stiff bone socket up here. So like Batman's, he can look down uh, quite a bit farther than what Batman did. And uh, also, he can get his head uh, nice and straight, a little bit straighter than Batman's. Head does do a full 360. And his cape is pegged much like Batman's is. So the yellow on the collar is a little bit more stark uh, in contrast between the yellow of the actual cape. Um, am, I, am I a little bummed? Eh, not really bummed, but it is what it is. I'm not going to knock it, so there you go. And the bone socket. Shoulders. Can rotate. Uh, no hindrance anywhere on the figure. Uh, does turn to bicep. Again, uh, this feels like uh, little female arms here, so be very careful. Um, I have not seen any reviews of this figure yet, so I don't know if anybody's had any problems, but um, you could probably foresee some. Uh, the arm does seem to bend very well here. Uh, does not turn at the glove, but does turn at the hand. He has um, kind of a rocky ab crunch. Not the best ab crunch in the world. You can kind of see some of the spaces in between there. So um, Batman's was much better. Um, it looks like he turns at the waist, but I cannot get him to move at all. Oh. Okay, I'm not going to force it, but you can see it's cut there. Either that or <laughs> he doesn't turn at the waist, and I'm going to end up breaking the figure. Boy, wouldn't that just suck? Okay, I can't get his waist to turn. I don't know if it can or not. Maybe I'll wait and see somebody else's review if they can get the waist to turn. Maybe again, the little hot water trick. Not entirely sure, but I'm not going to force it. Uh, legs do go up. The tunic does not get in the way at all. The legs being able to go forward or back. Has the T-joint to do the hi kick. Turns at the thigh. Bends at the knee. And the always iffy foot articulation on Robin, at least from the DC UC go, this one works very, very well. So they figured out that issue that was causing a lot of people, like this guy included, a foot to fall off. So they got that. Uh, this My Robin's a little bow-legged. You can kind of see he's a little squishy here with his ankle joints. Uh, something I like that hopefully the camera could pick this up, but see how his arm it's a little bit brighter here than his leg. Uh, they've made it look as he's wearing his tights. Or Robin only tans his bottom portion. So I thought that was a nice little touch that they added his uh, tights or his stockings that he would wear. <laughs> very, very cool. And uh, would, would have been kind of neat if they would have uh, made his hand so he could do the whole, you know, palm in the hand type thing. I thought that would have been really neat. So uh, that is Robin 
Very, very cool. Let's take a look at the accessories. Okay, let's get the cheesiest one out of the way first. The rope. Um, this just feels like it's a piece of twine, and I'm sure that's probably what it is. Nothing special. We did include it. Um, it's nothing to write home about. Um, it's probably about uh, 14 inches, as I'm not having it on screen here. 14 inches long. There you go. 14 inches. I'm guessing I don't have a tape measure, but um, I kind of see some grooves in it. It's not plastic. It's just um, I've bought something uh, like this and if I wanted to tie, you know, pieces of wood together or, you know, for craft things. So uh, they didn't have to give us anything. They could have said, hey, get your own rope. But they threw this in here. Uh, I've got Robin right here close. So it does fit in his hand. You know, to have the illusion that they're climbing. So, um, there's no hooking mechanism to it. As I will set Robin down again. So it's not like I can hook it on somewhere. It's just a piece of twine. So I could fashion something to hook onto it. I do have other uh, Batman uh, gadgets with ropes and hooks and things like that I could use. But it's not as thick for them to hold on to. Um, so it is what it is. So call it an accessory. Uh, again, they did not have to include it. So, uh, thumbs up for Mattel for at least throwing something in here, if nothing else, for just the box to display the, the hey, they got a rope and they're climbing. So, maybe that was its purpose, and they'll think, well, people will get a really good rope if they want to do as such. Uh, the next accessory is the Batarang. A really tiny, tiny Batarang. And at first, I thought this was going to be stuck in Batman's hand. I thought it was molded to it. I thought, oh great, Batman's going to constantly have a Batarang in his hand. It was just fastened in there very well. I'm trying to uh, get him off uh, camera here. Um, so it's kind of just sets in here and uh, there we go. Had to do it off camera there. As you can see, he holds on to it. The way they have his thumb positioned, one side of the bat that you can see there. Now you do see that hole there. Now the rope will not fit in to that hole at all. So maybe we could find a thinner rope. I don't know if that was the original um, thing that they were going for, but that is a really, really, really tiny hole. So I don't know if I could find a rope that small, but I get maybe what they were going to try and do. But again, teeny tiny hole, very big rope. So that is the Batarang accessory. And the last and the coolest accessory is the building piece, which would work as a flat diorama piece to put on your desk or whatever because of course in the TV series they filmed it like this and then for viewing purposes they inverted the film or they had the camera inverted on its side and this is how the actors were they were kind of crouched over and they used wire in their capes to make their cape stand which is what they were doing here got it see how everything ties together maybe asking yourself do the windows open? Do they open? Do they? Looks like they do. Yes, they do open. So you could have somebody pop out. Now you would have to kind of do um, this. There's not much to the back of it. It's not. It would have been really neat if they would have made this just a little bit bigger that maybe you could have. Uh, maybe had a base kind of how I review things here maybe if it was done kind of like this where there's a cut out in the back so you could have this piece here and maybe have a figure laying down underneath and come up through the window yeah just an idea I'm throwing it out there but um, I digress as I'm moving things back it is cool so on my review stand that I normally use right here let's just get a 
We'll look at this real quick, drop the camera down. That's how it would sit, so you could have Batman and Robin walking up on it and kind of go about it that way. Now, as you can kind of tell, this way if I would get Robin in a crouched position like he's going, and they do have peg holes, I didn't point that out. So there's the peg hole. So, and there are pegs, I don't know if I didn't point that out, there's two pegs for each character. So we'll try and peg Robin in one of them. So you get kind of the action. That's yeah, that is pretty cool. Now, granted, I would like for the cape to be up a little bit more, but uh, that's very very cool. So get him inverted. Uh, bear with me one second here, folks. There we are. Get him inverted here. And as you can see. There is a spot for a nail, so I am planning on nailing this to the door, probably not the door, but a spot on my wall, and they will be climbing. Holy hole in a donut! There's that stupid hole. I'm going to notice that hole all the time. I'm a little disappointed about that. So, um, that uh, that's really pretty cool that uh, I can get them to do that. And the peg does go pretty far into the foot. It's not the typical little Mattel tiny little peg. Um, I could get this one probably in here. Now I'm going to fumble with it a little bit. Come on, Robin. I think you get the general idea here. There we go. Robin and two pegos. I'm kind of holding him here. I don't have him uh, weighted properly. So there he is. On his own. Very, very cool. I like this a lot. And get it look from as Robin just falls, but you have the window open here. So very cool. Alright, you may be asking yourself, are they in scale with the DC? You see figures? No, they are not. They are more Movie Masters scale, which works really good if you have the Movie Masters Alfred. Uh, he does line up pretty well. But as you can tell, uh, the Batman, of course, you can see how skinny these figures actually are. And uh, now that you can see the DCUC uh, standard bodies there, of course, you know, Batman and Robin, my golden age Batman and Robin with the super golden TV age of uh Batman and Robin, so that's kind of how they look there. Uh, we'll do one more comparison really quick. And like I said, he fits uh, in with the Movie Master scale um, a little bit better than uh, the DCUC figures. So if you're wanting to pose them with your DCUC figures, they're really going to be a little bit smaller uh, than that, but it's going to—they're going to look great with the line that they have. And if this is the Alfred that you happen to have. Well, then it uh, it kind of works. Aside from that Alfred on the TV series having glasses and a mustache, this would work uh, very, very well. In closing, do I recommend this two-pack? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, of course, we had those couple little stupid tags in the back of their capes. Those can be removed. You have these stupid little T-joint things in their capes those can be removed the whole stay forever Holy hole in a donut. aside from all that um, these were $32 uh, something something uh, but it cost nine dollars to ship and I got it from Big Bad Toy Store um, Big Bad Toy Store does uh, have a little higher shipping and you know, some people are saying oh go to Forbidden Planet or you know go to Entertainment Earth or I don't think Amazon even charges that much I probably could have gone through Amazon and got super saver shipping for free because it was over $25 I didn't see that till after uh, Big Bad Toy Store was the first one to have it up on their site so I decided to go there so I think you could get it cheaper somewhere else so for about uh, 30 bucks I think it might have been like 32 with uh, since we were rounding up. I think it was like 31.90 something. So call it 32. So basically, a little bit more than 15 dollars per figure, which is about what we pay normally for DCUC figures. 
Uh, not only that, we're getting two figures and we got this nice, wonderful, awesome rope. Hey, it's, it's a rope. Uh, there is a small little batarang for it, which is right here. And then this awesome base that uh, the figures will stay on very well and we'll be able to mount it to the wall if you want to or just leave it on the base as it is. I don't have them in a really good uh, crouching pose here. I was trying to get it to just, you know, set up for uh, the camera display here. But it works very, very well. Um, I'm disappointed that this is the only way to get Robin, but if you do want Batman and Robin and you only want to get one of them, you know, don't waste your time and money on the single uh, Batman. Uh, get these two for the two pack and you get this cool base and it works with the other DC UC figures very very well so I highly recommend this. A uh, couple small little gripes here and there but they really really represent the two figures very well and that makes me very happy with Mattel and again makes me very upset with Mattel. If you can do quality stuff like this and the figures work and they look great then why do you cut corners on some of the other figures and things that you release so that's my little disappointment I'm not sure how many of the other figures from a line I'm gonna get um, I'm trying to scale back what I'm collecting uh, I'm not gonna buy the Batman in the trunks uh, which is kinda of funny unless I saw it cheap somewhere I won't buy the standard Batman because I have a standard Batman I would really like to pick up Catwoman, maybe the Riddler and Penguin and Joker. Uh, Catwoman definitely would be the only other figure I would really like to get uh, from this line. Um, I know part of me will go, okay, eventually I'll probably get him, or maybe I'll put him down as Christmas gifts, and maybe my wife or family members will pick me up one or two. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm very happy with these two. I cannot say enough good things about these two figures. And the, the display base is awesome. So hopefully you guys have liked this review. I have enjoyed shooting it, and I got this... Uh, almost two days ago now and they stayed in their box until today uh, being Wednesday I got them Tuesday in the mail and I uh, was really ecstatic to get them out but I wanted to shoot uh, the box opening and everything so I waited until I filmed it so that is the review of the 1966 or the classic TV series Batman the Batman and Robin dynamic duo two pack very very cool with display base and diorama battering and rope <laughs> so as always this is Rob for Rob's Rogues in the Batman universe and the Batman fans without pants podcast signing off saying we will see you guys next time tune in tomorrow same bat time same bat channel Holy cow, Batman. Why scale up the side of the building? Cuz old chum, sometimes a little bit of exercise goes a long way. Shut your fat ass, man. What is that? You're Santa Bob! It's Batman and Robin! Nigga, dude!